Alright guys, we have Scarf Stick to the left and ZZ9000 HDMI to the right. We're gonna compare them. We're running with my Amiga 4000 at 25 MHz, all 30. So we're gonna see how does it go. I can see my television over there. LG television is a bit brighter. Uh, and my PC monitor, I think this is 24 inches or something like that. And this is 32, as I remember. So I reviewed the unboxed and uh, reviewed a gamers review of the ZZ9000. And you guys are like, let's compare them. So all right, let's compare them. <laughs> So in this video, I'm not gonna talk that much. We're just going to enjoy how it runs because of my unboxing first impression of this ZZ9000 video. I can see the difference when I play. I can see here, we hear it, it moves in chunks and it's more fluid over there with the golden scar stick. But the issue is, the camera can pick it up. So it's only my experience over here, guys. So let's just go ahead and play a couple of uh, shoot 'em up games and, and, and see how it works. The speaker is on the everything. It's on top of a lot of Amiga magazines about this height. Because if I just put it down on the floor, it would shake the camera and everything would be ruined. So let's just enjoy the music. Let's enjoy scart stick. Let's enjoy HDMI. And everything is produced by... Can you see the Amiga? You can't see the Amiga over there. Everything is produced by the beautiful Amiga 4000. Okay, so let's go. Oh, yes. How cool is this, man? I love the ZZ9000. Absolutely love it. So let's see when some buildings come. If, uh, if in that, in this way, if we can see the the, uh, the minimal chunkiness that this one has. Look here, it's minimum. It's it's fine. You can live with it, absolutely. This game is so hard. <laughs> it's absolutely. It took a lot of coins from us kids back then, man. For me to see if I can see the difference on camera like this. See how that one, oh, in workbench, I'm telling you, the ZZ9 or ZZ9000, perfect, perfect. I haven't installed no drivers, no nothing. Put it in my Amiga 4000, turned it on, and that's it. This is the HDMI signal on a PC monitor. Look here, it's a bit chunk chunky. Oh, 
I can't see the difference. I don't know if you can like this. Look at how chunky. <laughs> Much more fluid over there. in the world the zip stick with auto fire on of course can you see this white how, how it moves can you see the chunkiness look look, look up here look how fluid it is over there i hope you can see the difference now Check out Silkworm also, again a shoot em up game from 1988. Oh yes! With all of our What do you think? I think it looks beautiful. What? You can see the chunkiness on the foreground here. If you look from the stone to the grass, you can you can feel the difference. I lost a life. Can you believe it? What's going on? Must be because of the little screen over here. <laughs> Come on. The sound man sounds amazing. What an awesome game. Look, look at the tree there. Look at it over there. something here it's it's worth a try I think so I will uh, I will uh, buy that 
Picasso 96 and try to install and see. But if enough you know, if it's only for the retargetable graphics, then I don't want to waste my time on it. Now this was the big one. It was that flower. It was this flakier here than there. And I should have watched the, uh, on the video I uploaded. It's hard to see the difference on the video. But the real deal, I, I can see the difference, guys. It's not much, but because of what we discussed on, on yesterday's video, let's just have this side-by-side -side comparison. The best thing, thing could be having, you know, identical monitors showing everything I know. <laughs> I don't know. I hope I've filled enough <laughs> to show you my experience. And as you can see, everything happens with my Amiga here. I don't know why, but I want to share something. When I when I run my Amiga uh, 4000 here, when I run it with the uh, SCAR out, and what's it called? Yeah, just a SCAR stick on one monitor only. This one is the Revision DCR, the last latest revision that the Commodore came out with where the CPU is directly on board on the motherboard so I'm not using the connector the 100 pin or whatever it was I don't, I'm not using the connector we're just running with onboard um, onboard CPU and when I run it with single monitor when I play 20 minutes I touched that little 6806 CPU and it's ice cold. I touched the FPU just to the right of it and it's ice cold. Running dual monitors, I mean, the graphic card should take care of everything, but the CPU gets so hot that I need to put some sort of cooling on it. I can just feel it, guys. It's so hot. And, and that must mean that the CPU is doing more um, yeah more stuff to control this and I just thought that everything was running from the graphics card but when the CPU gets so much harder <laughs> then something in there must be going on <laughs> it's cool yeah I just I just wanted to share that with you guys oh yes it is it is I, I can feel it's not burning hot, but it's hot enough to put a, a little, um, yeah, passive cooler on. So, guys, this was my experience. I hope you enjoyed watching this one. Let's try this game, Turkey 3 also. Okay, is it okay like this? I hope it's okay like this. Let's try it out, guys. Yeah, this is how it should run. This is how it should, should sound. Uh, a week ago, I played this with the uh, Pi 3200 Lite on my Mega 1200. That didn't sound so good. <laughs> it, did. it was odd because I can see on the video that the seconds were counting down precise. Turkin ran a bit faster, but the music was all over the place. <laughs> so it was three different uh, stuff that that Pi32 Lite did. It, it, it was, yeah, fun to watch and experience that. Cool. It will be better, I'm, I'm sure of it. Oh, some guy wrote, yeah, the day after you made that video, another update came out and all the problems you were having, but everything is, issued out and it works perfect flawless now 
Of course, buddy. <laughs> of course it does. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Some people. Why don't I have the picture here, guys? We need, we, we need, we need the picture, right? Of course we do. Guys, this mouse, this tank mouse, just buy it. You will love it. It's an absolutely amazing upgrade for the Amiga. See, we have pictures now. Isn't that great? Let's play Canon Fodder. It's a mouse. Oh, the screen's. It, it flickers on the camera. I'm sorry about that. It doesn't flicker at all. For me, <laughs> we are using the wireless mouse. We have 1.5 meters. I don't know in, in American. We have some feet different. Ah, let me try this with the new mouse. One guy did write that the volume was too high in my last video. Do you even like Amiga? I mean, the volume can never be too loud. I love Amigas. Everything that comes out of the pole, I just crank it up. I love it. This mouse, I... I, I love this mouse. Uh, playing a game like this, uh, it's really nice with the ZZ9000. But again, I mean, this is not a fast scrolling shooter, so it looks so beautiful, man. Color saturation, and that can be adjusted, I know, but wow. So if you, if you only have a monitor that has HDMI only I mean I really recommend this ZZ9000 so this guy is in pain Come on, no. Yes! <laughs> what an awesome game. Guys, I hope this video helped a bit. So both products that I reviewed yesterday, I absolutely love them. Uh, and I, you know how I am, if I see something bad, I just, I just show it, I don't care. But darn it, I love these great upgrades and you can use the mouse for all Amigas and the ZZ9000 works for um, Amiga 2000, 3000, 4000 and you can actually also do a little hack job and put it with an adapter, put it on the side of an Amiga 500 also actually. What an awesome game. Guys, thank you for watching. I hope you have a great, great day out there. Retro Django out. Bye.